to The Blend Welcome. with Ken's and Chan. Welcome back. <laughs> Great to be here. How are you today, Channing? I'm good. Yeah, it's it's a good week. Awesome to have you back, but I'm glad you were gone <laughs> <laughs> in the sense of getting restored. So it's a, it's been a good week. How are you doing? I'm great. I am pretty much caught up on everything after being out for two weeks. So that's nice. I was always a little, a little worried to come back and have it be like so many emails and people upset, but that was not the case. So yeah, it was lovely. Been good. I'm, I'm all good. That's amazing. I think that's one of the biggest fears we both have, and I'm sure a lot of entrepreneurs do, that I can't imagine not responding to things over two weeks. Like, that's insane. Or, you know, not being present or checking your email. And then you do it, and it's fine. And the team handles it, and no one died. You know? It's just crazy that how much pressure I think we put no, on ourselves. No, it was totally fine, and every like everyone was set up to be fine, and like knew that this was the plan. You know, no, there was no fires or anything crazy. Like it worked out just fine. Like it always will. <laughs> Definitely like the yeah. unnecessary fear of just like leaving things, but just being good at delegating and being comfortable. Delegating is so important. Just having some trust. Definitely. I mean, as I'm only saying this because I know if I was in your shoes and it was reversed, it would have been the same. But it was really hard to get you to take two weeks. Like, that was a feat (laughs) to get you to take that amount of time. So coming back, how do you feel? Do you feel like that was a good amount of time off? Like... How are you feeling? Yeah, that? I feel like if it was just one week, it wouldn't have been enough. Like, if I had just done the five days, because really we even had the 4th of July time off, and that week is pretty slow with our clients anyway. So if I had just basically taken the three days off officially of that week, I don't think it would have been enough, and it wouldn't have been I wouldn't have got as much out of my trip and I wouldn't have gotten much rest really. So yeah, no, it definitely was better to do a little bit longer of a time away. Um, Which I mean, like you were very integral in getting me to realize. So I'm glad that it did go that way. There's really no need for it to be shorter. Like it was perfect. It's awesome. Yeah, when I really thought about it, you have just never had that amount of time off, like even a full week. You know, you're the master of like maybe the four day weekend, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like you'll rock that, but that's just, you know, you're still running around like crazy, managing schedule travel, all the stuff. And when I really stopped and tried to think about when's the time you've done something like this it's never which is crazy long overdue yeah no I'm glad it finally happened I it really was like an unnecessary fear of leaving and like which is not a healthy way to live or it's not good for the business either because then I'm never actually delegating and never I'm becoming a bottleneck for the company if I'm like not letting other people know how to do things I'm responsible for or showing them or like allowing that to happen. Cause I mean, that's not how we're gonna scale. Like it's it's going to actually hold us back if long-term if we keep that mindset. So it's really important to, Mm -hmm. yes, of course need rest. And like you do have to prioritize just like taking time off and getting a break. But also, if you don't delegate and, like, learn that skill, it's not good for the business health long term. Like, it really isn't. You're not going to be able to scale if everything relies on you with a stopping point. So, I am down to delegate now. (laughs) It's taken me a while to, like, get to this point, which is bad, but. Well, it's, it's this balance. I mean, you specifically, you are a great manager. You may 
be hard on yourself, but I mean, how you empower the team members under you and how much they deliver and perform is really incredible. It is though this like other layer of delegation of things. And th- we've talked a lot about this things that we don't have yeah. to be doing. It's like, why are we just doing these things? And I think that's a challenge for you and I in this next phase of growth. But honestly, this is a great way to kickstart that is to pull ourselves out completely totally. and see it operate without us. And I know that I don't think we've really talked about this on here yet, but something I'm so grateful for is how you and I started going to a therapist, basically like a corporate therapist for partners. And that's been amazing on so many levels, but one of the most simple things that she helped us do is create a framework for taking time off as the founders because we've never had a boss. We've never had framework. We've never been told when we can. And so we just never have. I think you and I having that framework of one week off a quarter, that I that's going to be huge, I think. Yeah. And I mean, it's just planning it in advance and knowing that's time that it's go- you're going to be out and you can plan so far in it ahead to know wh- how it's going to look. And also we plan together so we're not necessarily going to overlap and like both be out for the same time. We can help each other take over each other's things too, which is, I mean, that's a no brainer. Like, of course we can. So yeah, that was like such a simple, easy tool that we're actually taking advantage of now, which is nice. And excited for you to have some time off in the next few weeks now, too. And you get to experience it. Yes. I'm pumped. I don't know. There's something weird about the mental shift. I think it's almost like scarcity versus abundance, where before we were almost given this framework that we could get behind of you have to take this time off, I think it's almost the struggle we've had too with our team of the PTO mm. versus unlimited PTO versus set. I feel for them, but obviously I'd rather give people more of the option to just take what they need versus feel that scarcity. But for you and I, it was like we were never taking anything and we were just very burned out. So I think you and I having dates we have to take off is huge for us because it's like, oh, I get to take this time off versus before we set this up, me taking that time off, I was like, oh, is that like a bad time to take off? Like, is that okay? Should I, like, should I be checking for stuff? And it's like, no. And then you and I worked through the mindset of, let's make sure that you and I are helping each other, like you just said. Because where I was getting really stressed was like, if an investor needs something or we have to wire a big payment for an artist or something gets messed up with a name act talent, deal like that is where I feel like I have to jump in regardless or where I have had to before so just having all of this in place eight years later (laughs) yeah it feels yeah just a quick just a quick eight years of learning it takes but (laughs) of just grinding (laughs) well so true and like like the investors or people you know high and clients like people that you do normally always respond to immediately because they're important they take time off too and it's like they're not gonna give you a second of their vacation day when they're actually off so it doesn't have to not be like that for us like it really isn't fair and they don't actually expect us to like respond in two seconds like Everyone takes time off and that is the norm. So it's this weird pressure we put on ourselves to almost like not even let people know that we're out. Like I felt this weird guilt of my out of office message, people seeing that I'm going to be out for two weeks and then them being like, wow, not a lot of work getting done over there. I see like just chilling. Wow. Two full (laughs) weeks. And I was like, so nervous that I was just going to get like judgment from people emailing me when really who cares honestly (laughs) who cares (laughs) totally you know sometimes it's funny I don't know maybe this just shows I don't know I don't know what it shows but sometimes when I get people's out of office I'm like oh nice like don't have to talk to you I love getting it I'm like great I didn't actually want to set up this meeting 
Yeah. Something that I would love to see change in our industry, and this is just a personal pet peeve, is that like the actual, I, I notice a lot at least, that artists' teams, I've never seen an out of office once because there is so much pressure for these people to be on 24 seven for their teams. I have never once seen an out of office for an agent and I've never once seen an out of office for a manager. And that's sad to me. Um, I feel for them, you know, cause like I think in a way they have to operate as that founder in a way for this act. And it's hard, I feel for them because we were operating that way too. Like, oh, we're never off. We yeah. can be available at any time. So true, yeah, that, that is true. Like those are the folks that are going on vacation with the fam and taking a call like from the beach, you know, like they are going to always respond. Yes. And of course, to an extent, there's ta- things that are important, but that is kind of, that is a, that is a rough way to live and to, to always just know you are, yeah. you have to have your phone on you and you have to like have Wi-Fi and internet and that's like your life. And I guess yeah. some people, maybe you're cut out for that. And, and obviously, yes, you're building something big or representing something really important, but that's rough. No matter what, you're not cut out for it forever. And that's why I think that we see so much burnout in the music industry in particular, because people just actually aren't taking breaks. And I mean, I love to see companies really focusing on the mental health of the actual people working in the industry, like Jump Global, doing their summit specifically for mental health for people in the music industry. I think that's awesome. I, I have always seen so many parallels between entrepreneurs and the entertainment industry and building a brand or building an artist's brand. So I don't know, that was a random tangent, but- No, totally. I feel like it all connects. No, it definitely does. Um, Yeah, there are these industries or jobs, positions. I'm sure lots of industries have that where it's like you are, it's frowned upon to take time off or to like not be in the office or to have a life. And um, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's really sad. I know, especially like American culture, we are so work, 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 everything all the time is the most important thing. Whereas other countries really do value that time off and it's expected that you will take multiple weeks slash months off in a year. So it's, yeah, it's interesting that when you kind of can compare the two and see the different dynamic in that at the end of the day, it's just work and it really, isn't the, always the most important thing. I am so fascinated by Gen Z's beliefs and mindset and just also being an employer of varying different generations. It's always really fascinating to see what matters uh, to what age range. Our age, we are more on like the bridge and transition to Gen Z than we are like late stage millennial. Um, I think we are in a really interesting time where our age range kind of connects with multiple different groups. We obviously are these like savage workhorses to a fault. It's not healthy. It's just what we, what our parents put it instilled into us, you and I in particular, um, I would, I would say, but talking with some Gen Z, it's, they really do have a better balance, I think, and understanding and ideal for their life and what they want and also too really aligned with their passions and I think every generation gets a lot of flack but I've always been impressed with that and I don't see it as a bad thing of course anyone we're gonna hire needs to have strong work ethic and be a self-starter you know no one's gonna there's gonna be people that aren't those things in any generation but I do think they have it the most figured out yeah, at least to where they, they know they're not going to accept less than that. Like, they're like, I this is what mm-hmm. I want and what I stand for, what I believe in, what I deserve. And if I'm not getting that, I'm not going to just, like, take it. Where I think, I do feel like our generation and older generations have kind of just, like, taken the crap for a long time or 
accepted things yes. that maybe we don't have to accept. And it is it is great to see that generation really coming out of it and changing things for the better and not just dealing with, oh, well, this is the way things have always been done. I love that. I totally agree mm-hmm. and respect the hell out of them. Yeah. And then I will be so fascinated to see what happens with Gen Alpha when they come more into like the working environment being raised by millennials. I'm like, what is going to happen here? I just have no idea. And But I feel like, you know, if we were ever parents um, to our kids, I feel like, I don't know. I, I, I feel like I would want them to have balance, but I'd want them to work hard in what they believe in. I don't know. It'll be really interesting. <laughs> If that ever happens. Yeah, I I always really think about how it's going to be with technology for our kids' age, because obviously they have it. You know, there's the iPad kids mm-hmm. that are that that have that <laughs> access to that at all times if the parents allow that. And I'm not a parent, so I don't have a valid opinion on that at this point. Just. I'm sure it's very hard to raise a child and like the iPad helps and like makes them focus. That's great. Um, but we don't know what the, what the downsides of that are yet, really. Like we don't really know um, <laughs> someone who was raised on technology, like what negatives will come from that. Um, I mean, when we, we had like the desktop computer in like high school yeah. still. So, I mean, it was very much not like a mobile situation yet with technology. And mm-hmm. and now it is really, I'm really interested to see how that's gonna change of just always having access to that. And what disconnect it, I think the disconnect for older generations like Boomer Plus, like being less and less connected and feeling like they can't keep up with the rapid pace yeah. of changing of technology if that really like disconnects people more. Ooh, that's interesting. And going back to the episode that we talked about why we love entrepreneurship and I loved what you brought up just about like working on a real problem and you brought up your friend Ashley and I think a lot about how these new evolutions in technology, children, parents, like that brings new problems to solve for. And how one of our advisors, Carrie Fox, how she is a part of Gab, which is really helping create safer technology for kids, which I think is so fascinating because we are, we're at this time where unfortunately a kid can access all the good and bad. And how are we controlling that? It's just it's an insane time. I mean, yeah, we don't we don't have to think about that, but I can imagine what parents go through with that. I know access. that is so scary. I mean, to think of just things you wouldn't want a child to see or be able to look up, it, and they can. They fully have access to. I mean, any piece of information you can imagine. That's super scary. I am glad that there is more and more technology that is being helpful with that mindset of protecting children. But yeah, I'm sure there was some, a lot, I'm sure there's so many stories of people learning things the hard way in that, in that realm. 100%. Well, I know we've gone on many a tangent here, which is great. It's blended. (laughs) Um, But another thing that I wanted to bring up alongside maybe as entrepreneurs struggling to take time for yourself, actually unplug, delegate, all those things, is your personal finances and taking care of yourself alongside the business, I have found really hard. And I know I, it's timely, I opened up to you a lot yesterday, even just about some personal things I'm going through and it did I'm so glad you threw out the idea of us talking about it on here just like the whole theme of personal financial health alongside growing your business because I don't think it's talked about enough I definitely was just like shoving it down well yeah even I mean certainly it's hard for us because we don't really have someone to compare ourselves to financially you can obviously say, okay, a woman of my age 
should be making this amount of money ish. But I mean, I mean, you know, like it's not that standard. Uh, and so with our business, we're way different because we're taking this risk of not making a huge salary in hopes that we do get a payout with a sale of the business or like long term, it's going to pay off. Um, so we're not normal, I don't think, in, in what salary wise or uh, like corporate growth wise, like getting raises and benefits and even investing like we're not normal. And I feel like we don't have a easy way to compare or to kind of know if we're OK. And a lot of times it feels like we're not OK just because we do take on such a huge risk and have for so long by continuously in reinvesting into the company with our money rather than paying ourselves a big salary. We just keep reinvesting into the company and we've done that for so long. And I think it's tough. I mean, it some days are better than others, but there are times when it's like, wow, this is this is rough. Like the money is not it. It's mm -hmm. not, it's not where I want to be or it's, there's big things I've needed to pay for in my personal life. And yeah, it can be really challenging and tricky. So well said. That's exactly it. And I think too, with us starting so young, I think something unique that happened for us is like, a lot of people who maybe go and start a business after having a job or two, they have a threshold of what, okay, this is what I was making. This is what I need to at least make. Maybe I'll take a little cut, but I'm making this. I think what was so strange about our situation is we were coming out of college technically having made nothing. So we were like, well, we don't need much, AKA <laughs> literally gave ourselves like nothing for years you know that even and obviously it was a it was a grind it was reinvesting like you're saying like we are working these hours now so we can benefit then but i think because we never had again framework that's the theme or structure or what do we pay ourselves it was like we were starting so low that getting ourselves up naturally took some time to where we needed to be just more from a health perspective financially totally. totally and we similarly to taking time off I think it was that ego thing of well almost like a reverse ego of like well what a why do I deserve to get a normal salary yes when I haven't proven myself yet or the business hasn't reached these goals yet or you know, we haven't reached this revenue milestone, so why should I get a living wage? <laughs> Which is, like, so messed up. <laughs> Obviously. It is. It is. Um, yes. But, yeah, I feel like we, yeah. I mean, we waited years to get even to, like, below average. You know, we were so oh low God, yeah. for so long. <laughs> Just because we, and we also, it's not like you talk about your salary with anybody. So it's not like we had someone telling us, oh my gosh, you guys, that's crazy. Pay yourselves more. It was just us talking to each other. Like, are you totally suffering or like we're, we're paying <laughs> rent. You so I guess that's uh, like, I guess that's it. Right. Yeah. Barely. Really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it did take us finally talking about it with some mentors that were like, what the F? <laughs> and, and that was, that was helpful because I think another big pain point I had is you always hear investors don't want to see like the money going towards paying like some crazy salary to the entrepreneurs. But what they're referring to is like a very highly paid person just carrying that over, you know, later right. in life to T eating up all the investment and so I think I put a lot of pressure on myself to be like okay well we can't be showing like you know we can't be eating a big portion of this investment or our net margin and profit all the things and it's like okay then it's like I share this advice but I wasn't taking it like no investors need to make sure that you can do this a hundred percent and have a solid foundation I say this to new entrepreneurs like you have to survive <laughs> 
we weren't right <laughs> we're not but now we've learned so and i think too that for obviously it's a lot of sacrifice it just is and i i was thinking about this yesterday after we had a good old heart to heart about it but i was just like wow when people ask about starting a business i want to be honest about how much it's taken to do it how much sacrifice like when the company can't make payroll i put it on my personal car like when we can't make payroll we don't take a pay check like it's just crazy in those really hard times over the years like you give everything of yourself to this and so it takes everything from you yeah you know? and it obviously gain you gain so much but it's hard to talk about yeah it i really struggle with advice to younger entrepreneurs as of late i think early on it was like yeah you're you can do anything go for it was always kind of the attitude and i think that's why like colleges asked us to come talk to their students and we were yeah um very positive and optimistic because again we were like oh well we just don't admit that things are ever bad so yes do anything yeah but i mean as we've gotten more honest and open about it like it it is huge financial risks that you are taking if you start a business that you may never you may lose a ton of money and never get any of it back and i think it's just accepting that and like being okay with the worst possible outcome, you have to acknowledge that and consider that and accept that that's possible before really going and starting a business. I, would be my actual advice now. It's so mm -hmm. easy to just say, go for it. But I mean, mm -hmm. th that is the reality of it is like there will be months where you might not make a dime and that will reflect mm -hmm. in your personal oh, salary. Yeah. Like because who else is, mm -hmm. no one else is there. So you gotta take a cut. Yeah. It's so true. And I think maybe the silver lining and thread out of this, when, because I think this advice is, that you're saying is so great and imp important for people to really hear, like that's actually what it's like. People ask what it's like, that's actually what it's like. And I think it's more set yourself up for success in the fact that, like you're saying, accept that whatever you invest in this, it may just all go away. But imagine, okay, if you're in a position where you could invest in another company or invest in someone else, that's the line of thinking an investor has to have to make an investment is that I may never get anything back. So if you're going to go invest in someone else, if you want to bet on yourself, awesome. Just envision it like an investment it may not go anywhere and you may lose it all. Um, so if you're in a position to do that and you feel really comfortable with that and you have a strong support system around you that can you know, help you through that, awesome. But I think we're on the other side of it where we really saw what happened to us mentally, personally, financially, all the things. Yeah, I know. I do wish there had been that that voice early on for us. Um, I do think, I mean, entrepreneurship is so promoted in, it's very, it's kind of a sexy thing to be an entrepreneur. Like all of the freedom, mm -hmm. all of the flexibility is what people long for and I think think is so great. Um, uh, yeah, the downsides are not shown and it's, tricky and, and and we talk about this a lot like the tough parts like we do we bring it up because mm -hmm. we feel it but and then of course you know we have a whole episode about all the great things and how how it can be so fulfilling you just have to think about both like I think it's just considering everything and um also the thing I always say is like do both like if you have a full-time job and you want to start a business like do both as long as possible like start the business but yes. don't lose the job like work two jobs as long as you can while you have that steady income because you're not going to have an income for the business for so long get customers Absolutely. like get re some revenue in before quitting or going full-time with a new business 
um, because you don't know how long it's going to take to get that first dollar, and it's usually longer than you think. Yes. <laughs> Exclamation point. <laughs> it has been a wild journey, and I wouldn't take any of it back. I would want to do it totally. the same way to learn everything that we have. Um, and honestly, in a weird, twisted way, I'm grateful that we had to learn so much on our own this way. I feel like I tend to, uh, I've learned in my life, I tend to be someone that needs to learn things the hard way to really have it stick. Um, For sure. Unfortunately. No, totally. <laughs> so I feel like these lessons have stuck. Totally. And I think too, what I would say now, looking back, thinking about personal finances, even when you're not an entrepreneur, it's not talked about like how to invest, mm -hmm. how to build wealth, mm -hmm. how much should you have by a certain age saved, like retirement, um, Roth IRAs, like all of the th just financial um, knowledge is not a thing that anyone is ta mm -hmm. taught anywhere, like in school. And then it isn't normal to talk about it with other people. Like you don't see you don't talk about what your salary is with someone you just met and you don't talk about how much money you have in your savings account it's kind of a taboo topic which also i feel like is unfortunate because the people then d just suffer for not knowing what's normal or not knowing how to totally. put a, do a budget or how to save or how much they should be saving and it's really it's really tricky i mean to navigate that if you're an entrepreneur or not Absolutely. And this is a very, I will say, this is a very limited perspective because it's just my view, what I have noticed in a small form. But to me, it feels like to really have a financial understanding of the landscape, most people I know that do from an early age got that from a very financial literate parent or family member and really taught them those things. But if you don't come from necessarily a financially literate household, it's hard. Um, I've even, you know, experienced that myself. Like these things weren't taught to me. And then coming into your own business, you're not a part of a framework or a corporate setting that's like showing you how to match your 401k and build that side of your benefit package for retirement. It was like, we were just like, okay, what's the bare minimum we can give ourselves to survive and eat popcorn and do our business, yep. you know? Um, and I've noticed that uh, with, with some of my community, and I do. I think it's so important. Like, there should be more here that's really helping, I think, especially because we're in it, the entertainment industry, artists, entrepreneurs, creatives, in giving a framework to this. Maybe that's our next business. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, there's so many resources that are not easy to find and are just lacking. And yeah, it's so tough. It's, I think at least we're, tr we're trying to talk about it. We're trying to put some things out there of, of how to find resources or even be a resource potentially, but it is, yeah, definitely. it is tough. It like you got to search for it. You got to, and then it's hard if you don't even know what you don't know, you don't know what to search for. You don't know where to start. You think you might think everything's mm -hmm. fine and you're on the right path so yeah it is just a um really difficult thing to navigate when when you're not quite sure absolutely okay so to wrap wrap us up maybe share an advice tidbit or two on what have you learned has really helped you in your personal financial journey I'd love to learn oh, as well. Love it. Well, I <laughs> think, what have I learned? I really stick to a budget now and my personal spend. And one trick, it's not, it's pretty basic, but I mean, that, that helps me at least is with credit cards, like how I avoid overspending on credit cards is keeping track of the balance and like I have basically I have a spreadsheet every month where it's like here's the cash I have here's the debts I have on credit cards or otherwise 
and like make sure you're still always in the green you know like you're not getting you're not spending more than you make ever so i'm just constantly like making sure that there's no like i have the cash for any credit card spending um and then like pay them off like twice a month has been really helpful for me of course i've had credit card debt and that's not always been the case but um sticking with that has helped a lot of just like don't just like let it get away from you and not and like spend and think you have enough like always be comparing the checking account to the credit card balance like they gotta they gotta be pretty close there we go what would, that's what it. would you say what have been some like tricks and tools and tips that you would that have worked for you yeah um a a, a, a basic but game changer one for me is I had to get very real and honest of my weaknesses and that I was so focused on the business's financial health that by the time I got home to mine, I just didn't have capacity for it. And so something that really helped me, I know it's not for everyone, but I personally found a financial advisor that I just really clicked with and I felt like could take care of again creating a framework for me because I've always been so impressed you are really good with creating a framework for yourself and I just am not so I was like okay I need you to budget me out I need you financial advisor to tell me what I can spend what I cannot where I'm saving where I'm not where I'm investing where I'm not <laughs> I just needed that assistance in this phase of my life so that was huge for me and there are so many different ver varieties of financial advisors and mine's actually really affordable. I think there's like this scary, you know, uh, perspective out there that they are taking a lot of your money, but honestly in the grand scheme, you know, an admin cost essentially. So that has been huge for me and I highly recommend it for anyone who doesn't feel like they can focus on it as much as maybe they should. Yeah, get experts. Surround yourself with pros. Love that. That's always a good idea. Yes. Well, this has been a fun one, as always. Love just talking about random life yeah, stuff with same. you. Yeah, same. Always. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs>